Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and we are starting today's project out with just kind of smushing together some scrap clay left over from other projects um, and reincorporating it into just some plain black Primo Sculpey and I'm passing it all through and getting it conditioned on the thickest setting on my pasta machine. So this is my Macon's brand pasta machine. It's probably my favorite. It's a mid-range price point, I think, like the lower mid-range, but super durable. And I, I'm working on a, it's like a four foot like plastic table from like Costco or something, but um, I just have it clamped on here onto the edge and it seems to be working really well. Sometimes I have to retighten it. I love whenever I get that nice. Well, before it rubs off, but sometimes you can get some really interesting effects. This is just acrylic paint that has dried. Uh, we have had a live stream on our channel recently at the time of recording. I love that texture right there. And this is the clay that was left over from cutting out and making some cabs that I'm going to show you a little bit later on. They're currently, at this moment, baking up in the oven. So I just want to get this nice and incorporated before I start introducing cleaner clay. And sometimes if there's like a big hunk of like, hunk of chunk of paint or something, I'll go ahead and just peel it off. But for the most part, it incorporates really well and I haven't found any issues other than giving it a little bit of a textured surface. Like you can kind of see how that has all that texturing. Whereas this here, the clean clay, has a nice smooth no bumping. And you don't have to use <laughs> dirty clay. Um, I just, I hate to waste anything and since I'm going to be doing some other stuff to the surface of this, I think it's a perfect opportunity to use up some second use clay. So actually, I, I changed my mind. I'm not going to be incorporating this into the big piece of clean clay, I may use this as my stretcher piece, which I'll show you what that means here in a little bit too. So yeah, getting everything nice and conditioned. Okay, so we could use whatever kind of stamps that we want. I really like these see-through stamps because they let me, well, see through them. And they're little cling stamps and a great way of storing them is to have them on these CD cases. Now, some of them don't stick quite so well as what they used to, but that's all right. This one's probably one of my favorites. Um, so I think I want to use that one. And we're going to come through and just mist the surface of our clay to start with. This is just water. And what this is going to accomplish is it's going to give us a repel between the clay and our, um, our, this thing. Our stamp <laughs> so I want to do just some cool little swirls so that didn't stick at all did it do y'all have any tips for getting this stuff to I mean probably having a cleaner surface would be a start but that's not gonna happen today okay so we can just place it and then get a decent smush going on we don't have to be super duper deep into the imprinting and the closer together you can get all of this to be um, the better of a result that you're going to get because whenever we stretch this through our pasta machine I, I had done basically the exact same technique but with steampunk stuff in our what day is it um in our august 13th friday the 13th um, live stream with steampunk with different stamps and stuff but I wanted to try one with just just some swirlies just to see what happens see how it goes but yeah I'm gonna fill in all of this there lots and lots and lots of little spirals I don't know how I always manage to like it would just be a miracle if I could actually keep <laughs> my work surface tidy for like two minutes but yeah, just gonna come in and I'm gonna turn this. I'm gonna drink some coffee. Mmm. Cheers. Thank you guys so much for joining me here today.
I'm very excited to be doing this project and sharing it with y'all. Okay. But yeah, just don't be afraid to overlap either. Just coming down and in. Whoops. Got it. It's kind of a, a struggle having my fingernails aren't very long compared to how I like to keep them, but um, they're long enough to make trouble for me. So, and I'm doing this in real time just because you never know what might come up. You also want to be careful with the edges of your stamp that you're not kind of messing up your surface. You could also use texture sheets or, you know, anything like that. Um, now, we can come in and we could, if we wanted, use like these longer strips to like just add in a little bit of like a different kind of design or, or something else we could use. I don't know, with the steampunk stuff, I had all sorts of little gadgets and hobnobs and all sorts of stuff to add little textures and things. Now we can, too, freestyle. We can come in and, well not freestyle, uh, freehand some stuff as well. So if you want to add in some little spirals and details and stuff, you can totally do that. If you want to add just some little dot texturing, in spots and this is just a regular ball stylus with um, a large and a small end right now I'm using I think the two millimeter end and you can just go through and to your heart's content and adding in little details like that now um, next up, we will be, let me, I'm going to do some rummaging and meet you back here. Okay, so here I have some Perlex pigments, some holographic powder, some nail art powders, and some little sponge applicators. In the past, I've been using my finger, but that gets kind of messy. So I am just getting some of that powder on there. And I want to start burnishing it in. And just kind of rubbing it around um, I'm not pressing very firmly sometimes water being on the surface of the clay can make things a little complicated um, and kind of dissipate the intensity so that may not be what you're looking for in which case you can just wait for your clay to dry but just coming through tapping off any excess because I don't want to uh, we don't want it falling down into the crevices. Oh, I could have been way more, um, I, I could have applied way more pressure up here where we did our dotting, but live and learn. And I'm just coming through and I'm going to keep burnishing this. I really love that holographic powder. I'm very interested to see how it bakes. And now we have some Prolex pigment. Just getting some onto our applicator. And I'm just gonna do like the whole sheet in different colors and I, I do like to kind of do some blend lines I wonder if there's a way that I can like heat nope <laughs> well I'd have to heat it and bend it but I'm like I, I don't like the straight applicator I'd really like something maybe I'll heat gun it and see how that works or maybe I'll just use it like this and figure it out. <laughs> we'll see. Okay. 
but I want to cover all of the high points of what we're doing. And you can see, oh, right there, some settled in. You might be able to use the clean end of an applicator to like remove it. Um, but sometimes I find not fiddling with it can be the best thing to do. Which is like the hardest thing for me to do is to not fiddle with something. But yeah, that was a good example of how... Um, well, let me lift this up before we get too much into it. Oh, I should have done this on some freezer paper because that allows me to keep it from sticking to our surface, which keeps us from getting tears and different complications later on. Isn't that holographic? Just gorgeous though, like I absolutely love that. I hope it bakes well. I can't wait to see how that comes out. But yeah, right there how I had too much on my applicator and it settled into those lines. So we could go through with a little like exacto knife or something and kind of scrape that back out. But let's just see how it translates. So now I'm going to do some silver. And this is some nail art powder, which I think is pretty cool. Okay, let me pop these guys. I don't want to be mixing my clean with my dirty. But yeah, so I get some on there. Kind of tap and rub it in on the lid. And this stuff is like super intense. Prolex pigments are great, but um, they aren't the end-all be-all in the crafting world. And I find it can be really neat to just diversify into different products. Because sometimes Prolex is perfect and sometimes... A very inexpensive nail art powder is just what the doctor ordered. And also I'm gradiating from our purple into the silver and then I'm going to be gradiating from the silver I think into the green and then from the green into the copper. And this way from this one sheet of clay we'll be able to get some really interesting uh, variation and effects. But yeah, whenever we get, like over here, you can see we have water on our surface of the clay. What did I do in that? There they are. Um, and it carries the powder into the crevices. So I'm actually going to come through and just blot our clay with a shop towel. You want something that's not going to deposit a bunch of like towel fuzzies onto your work, if that makes sense. And so now let's see how this, yes, we're getting a much cleaner result now. Because you can see the liquid isn't carrying the pigment down into all of our little nooks and crannies and crevices. And you could do any kind of stamping design. Like like I'd mentioned in our recent live stream, um, we had done steampunk, you could do a mermaid or nautical theme, you could do it be floral or um, little paw prints or just anything. Like anything that you can find, you can make your own stamps. You could do, oh it would look wicked cool I think with like those word stamps that just look like like a sheet out of somebody's journal that they've been writing in calligraphy in. <laughs> okay, so now on to the super, just pretty green. <laughs> I'm gonna use this broken one. Bah. Just getting some on the surface. I, I do like starting on a flat area too, as opposed to laying down initially um, over one of the designs. I like to kind of land in a flat area and then burnish outward from there. I think is gonna is getting me some fair results. Very interested to see how some of these textures translate. And don't forget to blend. 
Blending can accomplish a whole bunch. Getting some really nice gradients between the green and the silver. So it's, it's kind of like painting, it really is. Definitely, def definitely a lot of fun. <laughs> And so I hesitate to, I mean, I hesitate to skip over anything because I never know when something unanticipated is going to happen that might be helpful to you. But do feel free to skip ahead or put it into like two times speed or anything like that. Or you're more than welcome to totally get your chill on and just hang out here with me. I know I said I wasn't going to use my fingers, but it's so much faster, and I absolutely love getting to touch everything. <laughs> like, I love the tactile experience of just feeling with my fingertips. And, of course, make sure that the pigments that you're using do not irritate your skin and, you know, don't have, like, lead and stuff in them. There we go. I really like that green. And now we're going to come in with this copper. I actually used in the steampunk design too. I think this is my new favorite color. Um, ooh, and then I'm just going to come in and burnish this out. Now we can start by just laying the pigment down and then burnishing. And it does get to a point with the clay that it can only hold so much powder, um, but that can give you some really cool results with just brushing over and maybe catching some high spots over here in the green where they didn't pick up quite as much pigment as they could have hold, held, could have holded, I think I was going to say. <laughs> very, very cool. So now from here, we can take this and I'm actually going to cut it in half because we're about to start stretching it. Okay, so I'm going to start by, I have this on like setting six on my pasta machine and this is the thickness it's starting at. And I just want to go through and thin this out. There we go. Fold it up on itself, that's all right. We can just unfold it a bit. That's going to give us a nice piece to set on. Now, before I forget, I'm going to put it back onto... Okay, there's one. Let's do two. So, just a little thinner than the thickest setting. Now, I'm going to start with this piece here. And I'm just going to run it through horizontally. And so you can see already it's starting to get like a really, really nice shine and flatness to it. So because there's that piece and then just to show you the other piece. So that's how that one's looking before being stretched through the machine. And that's how it's looking after and you can see we still have a little bit of texture difference but i i love this because whenever i go through and cap this with clear resin um 
it's not going to run off of the cut edges as much and we'll demonstrate that just a little bit later so now i'm coming through to setting three making sure it locks in and i'm going to run it through the same way now we're gonna get some distortion here because we've only been stretching in one direction but that's okay because now i'm going to set this down I actually need to recondition this in the other direction. So I've folded this black clay in half and I'm just going to pass it through. There we go. And this is that scrap clay that we were using. So I'm just going to take these two now. I'm going to set, before I forget, my pasta machine to the thickest setting again. And this is going to be off screen for a sec, but I am just setting down my base clay. And then I am setting our color clay that we're stretching on top of it. Trying to make sure that there's no air bubbles. Oh, this is <laughs> doing it on a flat work surface works so much better, I'm just going to say. But I'm trying to get it on camera. So... For you, I will do some weird crafty stuff <laughs> just to try to get it just so. Okay, so now, yep, we're on the thickest setting. So now I'm going to feed it through in this direction. I'm going to cut off this excess black right here though. And then flipping it over, that's how our thin color looks on the other side. So we're just going to take this and I'm going to feed it through. And this is just letting us make good contact between the layers. And that's how it's looking. And we could stretch it again, um, like take it down a notch and pass it through the machine. Yeah, let's do that. There we are. And now I'm going to feed in this end again. And so while it has stretched our design, um, it no longer looks as distorted. So... I think that's pretty cool. And you can see the areas where we had... I'm going to get the camera turned around. Just a sec. <laughs> so now hopefully you can see in these areas where we didn't really have a whole lot of design, it does stretch and then become kind of... Not bland, but it doesn't have the swirling designs that I was looking for. But um, So that's something to keep in mind in your work. So now... When we come through and use our cutters, and I do try to be careful to not, like, my impulse is to, like, kind of wipe stuff off. And you can see, like, there, um, if you do that, you run the risk of dragging loosened pigment through your work. So I kind of just leave it be until after we have baked our clay. And I'm going to be baking this for 30 minutes at 275. But So there's one piece. And I'm going to cut a little slice out of our other clay. And you'll be able to see here, it's very, very light. This one isn't so bad, but like how we have a little bit of dimpling on the edge there from the design. And it's just little spots that whenever we're doming this with resin, we may experience runoff. Now, whenever we dome with resin, we're going to get some really cool, like, it's going to look a whole lot deeper because it gets a little bit of a lens effect whenever we um, dome over these textures. Um, but I think you'll be surprised at the textures and stuff that we get from these ones here as well. So I'm going to cut these out. I lay them on a glazed ceramic tile, super inexpensive from the store, baking at a preheated oven to 275 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes. And then I'll meet you guys back here. Okay, so I'm setting up to cast resin 
on these and these are the steampunk ones that we had made in our live stream that I was talking about and you can see here just on that edge maybe so do you see how there's that height difference whereas on this one it's completely flat that height difference can cause some runoff and leakage whenever we're trying to dome these with our two-part doming resin whereas the flat piece like this is going to be much simpler now we're going to get some really cool effects off of both of these but that's just the example that i wanted to point out and whether it's steampunk themed or anything it, it's not a theme thing it's a structural there's a difference in height and that low point the resin can quite frequently actually uh, pull and drip off that edge so I hope that that <laughs> I hope that that makes sense okay guys so I am masked up and have my gloves on and I am mixing equal parts of the resin and the hardener of this maker poxy normally I use art and glue or art resin but I was gonna give this a try <clears throat> just mixing 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 and you can see I've got a crap ton of bubbles in here because it says to not whip in a bunch of air, but that's really hard for me to do or to not do. So we'll figure it out. And I am just mixing up a storm. I really hope these come out good. So we pulled our tabs out of the oven and I've just left them there here on our tile. We could go through and do them onto tape and stuff, and sometimes I do that if I have too many to fit on just one tile. So, just mix and mix and mix and mix and mix. Mix and mix, 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 mix. This has like a 60 minute pot time, so there's no sense in rushing and not mixing enough. Yeah, there's a ton of bubbles in this, but I'll show you. It's not it's not a huge deal. Like it'll be okay. So now, if I were pouring this like directly into a mold, I'd be a little bit more concerned. But we're gonna take this, pour it into an applicator bottle. I'm actually going to, oh, well that's on there. I don't like this being there, so let's see if I can't, Ooh. oh jeez. <laughs> this is why we tidy up our work surface one, or rather this is why we should tidy up our work surface. Fortunately, that's already been baked, and it didn't have any resin on it yet, so I'm just snipping that off. Okay, so all of our resins in there, and we're just going to come around. The tile is still a little warm, but that'll be all right. And I am just using the tip of this applicator to spread a base layer of the resin all over the piece, getting it all nice up to the edge. Now I don't want to overfill, but I also don't want to underfill because I don't know how much of a shrink this, um, wait, just a moment. I do have an exhaust fan going. Oh, I don't mind wearing the mask except for when I'm talking, because it like breaks the bridge in my nose. But I do have an exhaust fan going, and this is a relatively low VOC 
resin. Um, you, we can always go back and add some more resin to the surface of these cabs, but I, since I haven't worked with it before, I don't know what its surface tension is like. You know, some resins are very, very viscous, and you can really pile it on there and get a nice, really nice doming effect um, without having to worry about it overflowing. So, I'm just going to keep going around and doing this. And if it overflows or gets like a dog hair or something in it, it's not too hard to tidy up, but I usually just throw them into, uh, on our website we sell something called dud boxes, where it's like, oh, that messed up and I don't feel like dealing with it. So we just throw a whole bunch of our, like, duds into uh, either a dud box or a mega crap box, as we call them, which is where I put, like, broken projects and projects that I'm just tired of that, like, I was working on or, um... Like, I broke an earring and I don't feel like fixing it. Like, I don't know, it's, or I, more often than not, it'll be I spilled a bead tray and just do not have it within me as a person to sort it. So I'm like, well, this is time for it to find a new home. My, hopefully you can benefit from my laziness. So, and you can see those bubbles are rising really nicely to the surface. And when this is all said and done, we will just go through and hit it with a heat gun. And that should pop all of those bubbles. Here comes a doggy. So yeah, again, just trying to make sure that I do make a nice connection to the edge. Ooh, and then this is one that we had not rolled out flat. So it's very, I'm very interested to see how this resin handles those differences in topography, kind of. I don't know if that's the appropriate term, but why not? Okay. So yeah, we've got just a bunch going on here. This one's thicker on one side and thinner on the other, so it has a little bit of like a slope thing going on. I'm going to see how the resin handles that. And I'm just very excited to see how these pigments come to life with a clear cap of resin on them. So I think I'm going to throw this into time lapse and once we get down here to these guys we'll really be able to see how the uh, how the resin's doing on the different heights and surface. So I have made it now with so far no overflows um, to where we have some different texture. So I'm trying to, again, bring the resin as close to the edges as I can. And this may be an instance where it would be a really good idea to go through with like a UV resin first around the edges. You could tape the edges. Um, like just do a little bit of like scotch tape around the edges, but then we don't get a nice domed surface. We risk, um, you may need to go back through and dome it again after you've established a nice flat base. So I think the trick is to just not press too deeply with the stamps. Sometimes I can't really help myself, but um, if we can avoid that, I think we'll get good, consistent results. In theory. But I do, do love the way that it, it just makes it have so much more depth, I think, to have the texture. I don't know, we'll see how it looks. Oh, I'm loving this holographic, you guys. Oh, that's neat. 
<laughs> oh, I like that so much. Okay, I'm definitely going to have to make more of these. I can't wait to send them out in our craft along kits and see what y'all make with them. Now, we do um, have our craft along club since I've mentioned it. Um, but if you want to try some of our craft along kits without joining a subscription, we do sell just the kits on our website as well. They aren't specific to like any one project or anything like that. Um, there's actually video tours on our website of what you can expect in each of your kits. Um, and then in some of our live streams, we'll actually do like craft alongs where um, you know, we'll make stuff with the, the materials that we sent out in that week's kit. Um, well, we send them out monthly, but sometimes it evolves throughout the month what we're sending out, just depending on what we're making. And um, in that way, you know, if you're kind of stuck or you don't know what to do with some of the maybe laser cut components or you're just feeling yourself in a creative rut, maybe we can help you out. Okay. So again, double checking, no spilling so far. And you can see those bubbles are really coming up to the surface. I mean, check out that shine. I don't wanna wiggle it too much, but I'm gonna set this off on, I have a prepared flat surface, hopefully flat surface. I'm going to start doming um, another batch just while I have I don't think I'm gonna have enough resin in here to do the whole um, thing but we can see how far we get and I'm gonna check that again in just a little bit to make sure that it's not um, you know, I don't have to do this the hard way. I can just scooch it towards myself <laughs> um, to make sure that it's not leaking. But we're just going to come through. And get nice and close to that edge. Hopefully without overflowing. Ooh, and then if you do goober it up before it runs away on you, you can actually... Save it, hopefully, or you can try to. <laughs> Points for effort, right? Yeah, it's definitely starting to thicken up on me a little bit. I don't have an accurate idea of how long I've been doing this, but usually if something says it has, you know, if it's got a 10 minute pot time, I treat it like it's got a five minute pot time. You know, if it's so with this, having a 60 minute pot time, I'm treating it like it's got a 30 minute pot time. And that way, at the 30 minute mark, I'll go through and start making sure that I'm like popping the bubbles and stuff and doing some finishing prep just to give myself that little bit of leeway. Heep! So, this might be a better example. Whenever I've run over an edge, I'll try to make sure that I scrape it and break any sort of surface tension that might be dragging it down the edge of the cab. Whoopsie. It looks like we've got some overflow onto the other side as well. That's okay. We'll figure this out. And that knit drain back down to the tip. Okay, so yeah, I'm just gonna keep doing this and then I'll meet you guys over at my other work surface to pop some bubbles. We sure do have some bubbles though. Check out those bubbles. My bubbles. All right, y'all, so this is how they're looking. I have not popped these guys yet. That is just how they're looking from being sitting there doing their thing. And this is my heat gun. I'm just doing it on low. I'm letting it heat up and blow any cat hair that might be stuck to it. 
Uh, and now I'm just going to come through, minding the cord. And you can see, hopefully, all those bubbles pop. Now we don't want to linger too long because we don't want to scorch it. And we also don't want the air to be moving so quickly that it moves the resin. Yeah, you should be able to really see on these bottom ones. That, I think, really demonstrates just how much this is popping the bubbles. Now I'm going to set myself a timer and I'm going to go back and do this about every five minutes, like two or three more times, five to ten minutes maybe. But yeah, so that is how I set them up and how I cap them in resin. And I'm going to let these guys dry and then we will come back and take a nice look at them um, after... I think it said that they're done after 12 hours, so we're going to do that. I'll meet you guys back here. So this is how they came out, y'all. I am very, very pleased with the depth these are the flat ones that we rolled flat and then over here are the ones that were not rolled flat ah, that one got a cat hair in it that'll be in the dud box <laughs> but super duper shiny and cool looking so if you guys have any questions comments or ideas please leave them down below i do love hearing from you guys check out that holographic y'all Oh my god. <laughs> That's probably my favorite. I'm not going to lie to you. That's like the coolest. Ah! <laughs> uh, if you're in interested in supporting our channel, please consider joining our uh, Craft Along Club for as little as a dollar a month or $12 a year. And there's more info about that on our website and down in the video description. And I look forward to seeing you all next time. So until then, happy crafting. Mwah! Bye. <laughs>